Bye, guys. Hi, guys. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I can't even figure out, to be honest, um, how to view the comments. This is really bad. This is literally called winging it. Uh, mom, 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 mom. Let me think. I don't know. I'm hoping you can see it. How does one view comments? Um, 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 um. The thing is, if I cannot see comments, I can't see if you get, well, I can't figure out if um, you can hear me. So I think, Um, oh, yay, I got comments. Yes, I think you can hear me. Great, 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 great. Phew. Ah, that was scary for a minute. I know uh, um, I'm trying to sort of, how shall I put it? I'm trying to view the comments at the same time as speak, which is like really weird in my head. There's a bit of confusion there. Um, and also I know there is a little delay in when I'm sort of moving my fingers about to when I am seeing it on the screen. So I'm assuming there's a delay for you guys too. I don't know. I don't have much experience with Facebook Lives, I guess. So I'm, I'm sure it should be okay, even with the delay. It just... It basically just means I finish before you do, right? So, um, yeah. Um, 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 um. I don't know what else to say. Normally, you can't keep me quiet. Well, no, not 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 true. Actually, normally when I'm teaching, you can't keep me quiet. But something like this is sort of very weird. It's nice to have that interaction when someone's speaking back to you. So I don't know. I'm waffling, aren't I? I'm waffling now. I'm just waiting for a little bit longer to see who else joins us. And if I go quiet, I mean that, that I'm not sure what's more weird talking to myself. Well, not myself, but myself or going quiet. I think I'm beginning to understand why they say, you know, presenters and news people should just keep talking rather than have quiet for a few seconds, minutes. <laughs> Hours would be too long, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I'm sure my kids would appreciate quiet for hours. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm hoping everyone is good. What's the weather like in your area? I've got some beautiful sunshine. It's really nice. And you may find me disappearing in between if it gets too hot in the room to go open the window. I mean, it is slightly open, but not fully because I'm quite, um, well, not quite. I'm, I'm petrified, absolutely petrified of wasps. And I'm quite scared of the outside, basically. Even in the summer, I don't sit outside. You know, I avoid sitting outside at all costs. Wasps petrify me. Worms are just ugh, ugh, squidgy. Not that I'm, I go around squidging worms, but they definitely do look squidgy. And they're just generally bugs. And, uh, you know, when people say they're having a barbecue, I sit there wondering why anyone wants to share their food with bugs. I don't get this concept. Why would you want to share your food with bugs? Ugh. I think just, just the non-veg I eat is enough for protein. I don't need to add bugs to my diet. Well, not quite yet. Maybe if I was absolutely starving, I may do. But yes, wasps, I, I think it's the wasps that completely petrify me. 
So I just, I'm just too scared to go sit in the garden, no matter how hot it is, I will not go out. Which is a shame, because on days like this, you think, well, it would be really nice to have those, um, the conservatory uh, doors wide open, but no. Can you imagine if I did have them wide open and uh, a wasp decided it wanted to come in today while doing this, I think you wouldn't he well, hear from me at all. And you, well, you would hear the screeching that would go on <laughs> and, and me jumping here, there and everywhere, toppling the chairs over to escape a wasp. <laughs> so, I, yeah, safe to say the doors are staying closed, just, 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 you know, to be on the safe side. I, I don't need to embarrass myself more than I already do. <laughs> um, and also, just to say, I think... You know, last time when I did um, the the um, the live, I know there was a lot of spamming. Well, I didn't know during the live, but there was a lot of spamming going on during the feed and stuff. And, you know, in the comments, uh, I would really say, please do not click on any links because it's definitely not me putting up clink clinks. <laughs> links up there so please 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 do not click on any of the links especially if they say you know log on here to watch the facebook live it's not possible <laughs> you know i'm already well i'm hoping i am already on here because i'm not reading the comments at this point i'm just waffling on um but just just to say do not click on any links i do have a couple of uh, lovely ladies helping me um well, I'm hoping helping me because because that will depend on whether I set it up properly to, um, you know, have a, a couple of ladies co-hosting me, Deb Moore and Rosalind McClellan, well, Ros, um, are helping me hopefully, you know, with uh, blocking um, the spammy people who seem to think, you know, this is their favorite way to pass their time. I mean, seriously? definitely need a life. I mean, if they can't find something useful to do, hey, come come to me and I'll teach you Groovy or Zentangle or whatever. But please, you know, do that rather than spamming for no apparent reason. Okay, it's gone two o'clock. I'm going to start the demo. Otherwise, I know we'll be here forever. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But uh, it's Saturday afternoon. You may have families waiting for you. I am actually cooking dinner for three families. Believe it or not, I am cooking. I don't generally cook. I mean, I, you, my kids used to believe when the smoke alarm goes off in the kitchen, dinner is ready. And that's when they used to come to the dinner table. So you can imagine my cooking skills at this point. But today I am cooking for three families. I am going to make lasagna. <laughs> I'll let everyone know how it turns out. <laughs> Should be fun, right? Um, so I'm going to start because I, I want to do that afterwards. Although this is definitely much more up my street kind of thing. But <coughs> um, no, no, but full stop, end off that conversation. Okay, this is so what I thought is, and I think I will clear this from the beginning, is although I am uh, doing my creations on the tags, you don't necessarily need to do tags. Um, what, what you're looking for is basically the layout maybe of what I've used, if you like the layout kind of thing, you know, uh, using the plates you have. I just felt that tags were well, the, this tag, especially this size, it's a really nice size to sort of do a short Facebook uh, live on and, um, you know, complete within maximum one and a half hours. I'm hoping it will be less, you know, maybe an hour, but I don't know. This is why I said, you know, I'll put, well, I put 2 p.m. and then, well, until I finish really. But for, for that reason, my base is tags. You don't need to do tags. You can put them on a card, you know, use your rectangles, your squares. But just, just look out for the layout, for example, I've used there. 
and you can uh, repeat that layout on a, on a card. So for example, yes, I have got a tag over here, but that doesn't mean you need to have a tag. You, you may not have the tag plate. Why not replace it with a circle from your circle plates, you know, or put a square instead of a tag. So there's lots of alternatives. And instead of this uh, rose, rose border, you can use any of your border plates to create a border in that sort of section. So, you know, focus more on the layout of the project rather than the shape of, uh, the, shape of the tag that I have. You know, that's not the important part um, in this demo. So this is the one I am going to do, except I'm going to change my colors this time. Um, this one is, again, using um, the same plates, but just done slightly differently kind of thing. And then I have got this one here, again, using exactly the same plates, but once again, just you know, moved around. Now, this one is the one I'm going to demo, but these two, I will block them at some point next week with a step-by-step -step so you can see. But, you know, they've been done, they've been created using the same plate. On this one, I have actually done some stitching. I don't know if you can see the stitching along there. Because, well, because I like stitching, I guess. <laughs> so I stitched it. Um, so what do I have on my desk? Other than the tags, of course, we need parchment paper. So I've got parchment paper. The plate we are going to use is, well, first we need a plate mate. This is the plate mate for the rectangle plates. And that's the groovy tag plate that I am using. That sits into that plate mate. I have got the tag. Um, the tag dies here and this is the, the second largest is the one I am going to I'm using for this demo I mean as I do the Facebook lives my base is always going to be tags so I'll swap between what size I want to use it's really useful having these I mean obviously if you don't have the dies you can always you know and sorry let me start again if 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 you have the um, the groovy plate with the tags. You can always, you know, cut your cardstock around it if you don't have the dies. But, you know, they, they're really useful. It just makes work so much easier and neater and everything if you have the die that corresponds to the groovy plate. So for that reason as well, you know, it's really worth it. And I know for me, I'm going to get a lot of use out of this if every two weeks I am going to use, I'm going to make a tag basically as my, as a base for my work to be. So tags. So as you can see, I have already cut out one tag here. That's from the, 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 the Indian Summer. So Indian Summer designer card here. Yes. Do you know what? It's really weird because I am, uh, I'm doing the live through the phone, which I can barely see the screen of. And on the screen, on my computer, I have it on. And there's this really strange, long delay from the time I'm saying something to I'm seeing it on the screen, which is kind of throwing me a little bit. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, 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 I'm confused. You can tell I'm confused at this point. Um, so anyway, Indian Summer Designer Card. You can use any card stock you have. I just think that, you know, this, this is a, a, a lovely weight for my base to be. Um, and uh, yeah, look, check out on the Clarity website. They've got so many beautiful designer papers and designer card, designer parchment. They're all beautiful. Just go with the colors that you like, uh, you know, and uh, use anything. I can get two tags out of one sheet of this designer card, which is really good. Uh, I already said parchment paper. We have a groovy tab groovy tab groovy guard that um is useful for well everything it it for me that's my price possession i cannot do without my groovy guard at all 
And then for mats, we have, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I'm wondering where shall I move it that I don't have it going crashing on the floor, which I know is what would happen to me. So I have my, um, what's it called? Embossing mat from the starter kit. So this is the hard side. And then we have the softer side on the other side. For the moment, I'm going to work on the, on the hard side of the mat. I do have my light wave. I will turn it on at some point. I, to be honest, I use it all the time, even when I'm doing my li line, um, line work. It's on all the time. But um, I am aware some of you may not have the light wave quite as yet. Put it on your wish list. Once you start using it, you will wonder why you you didn't have one before. Um, but I especially, especially love using it when I'm coloring because I can literally go from edge to edge with my coloring. So I, I will turn it on at some point. But for the moment, I will continue using just, just this mat. And then I have the Super Foam uh, which is about one centimeter deep. I'm going to use this for when I do the perforating with the two needle tool. And then the Pico foam for the, for the, for the, well, when I get to the Pico cutting, right? We have embossing tool. I am using just the Pergamano one, or if you have the groovy tools, use the groovy number one. I'm using the Pergamano one mm and then two needle tool i'm going to use the bold two needle tool to perforate if you prefer you can use the fine two needle tool my eyesight is to be honest not what it used to be so i i've yeah i've, I've swapped to the two needle tool at this point so i'm going to use the bold and then we have um, our scissors so you have a choice of scissors that you, I don't know which ones you may have. Those are the ring locks, there's the exclusives, and then there is the perga cutters. Yes, these two pretty much work exactly in the same way. And this one is a pinchy action like tweezers basically, but I'll show you how to use those. I tend to swap between my exclusives and my ring locks. It's, it's very much a personal preference as to what you prefer, you know. So, but I, I'll show you how to use both. For coloring materials, I have my Perga Colors exclusives. Yes, 30 beautiful colors. I absolutely love these vibrant colors. You know, I think most of my on most of my work, I always have felt pens on it because I just love the uh, vibrancy not vibrancy but i come from kenya and we want dot to say v as a v so like anything like uh, vav vavels <laughs> that was the wrong one to choose wasn't it because i can't pronounce that van we never said van we, we would say when like a w so background information about me <laughs> sorry <laughs> Um, and then I have got the Pergoliners. Um, this has uh, watercolor pencils and blendable uh, base pencils, basically. I'm going to use Pergoliners, but if you have uh, polychromos, those will work. You know, any blendable pencils will work. So go with what you have. So moving some of this stuff out of the way. And then extra stuff. What extra stuff do I have? I have um, Dorsa Oil basically to blend our pencil work with. I have a bit of sponge to put a drop of the dorso oil. I have um, some nibs for the blending to, uh, pen. Yes, yeah, so there's a blending pen. I tend to have, yeah, lots of nibs for lots of colors. And then we have, did I mention a tumble dryer sheet? A tumble dryer sheet. We have some groovy tabs to attach our parchment to the plate. We have, um, what else do we have? Brads, 
to stick the not stick to attach our parchment to our backing card but because um, the parchment goes uh, well because the brads go to the back of the backing card you would see the brad so if you know if this is the way you're going to attach it then you need to cut out an extra tag so you can cover the brad you don't want it to look messy on the back so i've just covered the um the extra one yeah so that's that then we have a piece of ribbon because tags need rib ribbons right i mean not just tags ribbons look beautiful on card as well and surprise surprise it's pink do i like pink no but yes i love pink i have some glue dots these are like diddy 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 really tiny glue dots they're da, 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 da. you know i can't even see my screen so i don't even know if i'm showing you properly or if i'm off screen um why do i need glue dots i need glue dots because in case i decide to put sequins now this is my happy box do you think i have enough sequins i can just this is just so therapeutic you know when you're feeling ugh, long day stressful it just this is my yes my therapy isn't it beautiful i can just sit here doing this like well forever but i do have a demo to do don't i so i should really move on at this point but everyone needs a sequence box yes definitely and just to let you know in case you think i don't have enough there don't you worry i have more under there yes so we're good i think this should last me a while okay let's start demoing so first we need our plate mate for our play for our plate to sit on groove side up and groove side up is like well you can hear it so groove side up or you can see the groovy um words the right way up yes so then you know your plate is the right way up you need your parchment paper and i need my groovy guard do you know i was holding all this stuff in my hand all this time which was a bit silly wasn't it sorry <coughs> Uh, a couple of groovy tabs actually i have groovy tabs on my thing can i get it on yes i will be able to get it on the... i'm going to actually cut my parchment because uh, just just it will make it easier and i can save the other half for another demo or as an extra piece but it'll just make it easier for me so i'm just going to cut this piece into half there we go save that one for later bring in my plate again so like i mentioned the 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 the, the are we ready by the way i'm hoping we're ready i'm just waffling on you know uh, you know fingers crossed i don't click something stupid after the live ends and this should record itself and you know upload it onto my page if it doesn't <laughs> there'll be a blog happening a step-by-step -step blog but i'll try not to click anything um so you know if if i'm going too fast you you'll have the option of watching it later and catching up because i am really not reading comments as i'm doing this um yeah sorry go back focus girl focus groovy tabs no not groovy tabs groovy tags these are not groovy tags these are dies <laughs> dies i like i mentioned i'm using the second largest one and these die this particular one goes hand in hand with this plate here yes so i know that this tag corresponds to the second oopsie daisy to the second um, tag over here yeah so that's the one i'm going to use um for my uh, basic outline shape of this one yeah okay so i'm going to turn that round 
so it's more comfortable for me i will try and not knock the phone as i bend forwards um groovy tabs so a couple of groovy tabs so that i can keep the parchment in place while i'm uh, tracing it out there we go and run your just rub your, your dry dry tumble dryer sheet yes not a wet tumble dryer sheet over your work it will help the uh the embossing tool glide better now for this tag i have used basically um the ins the third well the smallest um outline which is this one along here just the one outline you can use double outline if you wish that's absolutely up to you if you want a double outline which i have done on this tag for example yeah on this tag i've used but if i show you the difference if you do a double double outline and decide you want to peek or cut around it can you see it fits perfectly onto the die cut the die cut tag itself yes but if you use just the one the smallest one you have got a bit of the edging left of um, you know you can see more of the backing card sorry that's what i meant to say um a bit of the backing card so it just depends on you know the look you prefer i i like them both because i i do love the double outline there but i do like the well i like them both and i think over time i'll probably just go with uh, well wherever my mood takes me my whole life revolves around with wherever my mood takes me <coughs> that actually that's really bad because can you imagine if i'm in a bad mood where that could take me i feel sorry for my kids <laughs> i really do poor things <laughs> They're used to their mother. It's okay. Okay, so I'm going to stick with just the one outline. And using the groovy tab. No, groovy guard. Why do I keep saying groovy tab? It's, it's sort of stuck in my head. Groovy guard. I'm going to put it over my parchment. So it helps me hold it, uh, keep the parchment down. And I am going to come around and emboss around there around here using the Pergamano 1mm ball tool. If you're using your groovy to, uh, embossing tools, you're going to use your number one tool. Yes, and I like to turn my work as I am doing this. Now you will notice if you are using this plate that, uh, can you see there is a gap here uh, and it goes around this way and that way. On, on my tag itself, oh, wrong one, bring the other one back. On this one, I just filled up the space there and I'm, I'm gonna go with that just so I can show you how to do that in case, you know, you, you didn't want to leave this gap. To be, to be honest, the gap is not going to matter because don't forget, you, if, you, if you are making a tag, that is, you're gonna have your ribbon going through. So it's not gonna matter. However, it, it's just something that um, on your other projects, for example, if there is a gap and you need to fill it in, what you can do. But for this one, if I don't do that, it's fine because it's gonna have a ribbon. And I embossed the smallest circle in there. Am I still on the page? I hope I am. No, not on the page, on the screen. Or have I gone off screen? I'm asking, you know, as if, as if um, I'm reading comments and I'm going to, you know, read what you say. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not being rude when I say, you know, um, I'm not reading comments. But really, I can't multitask. So only for that reason, I'm not um, reading comments. Can you see? So here's the gap. Let me show you. Can you see? There's the gap. And I, if you wanted to fill it, so for example, on this one, I can just go to one of the other um, where there isn't a gap and just fill that in. And now you've just, 
you know covered it up but for this one it wouldn't really have mattered okay I want to then I am going to put a tag which one shall I have it should I have it this way yeah let's have it this way I'm going to put a tag approximately maybe there and I can line it up so that uh, you know the outline along here sits comfortably into the grooves of one of uh, any of these grooves you know any of the three it doesn't matter if you change it just moves where your tag is going to go so depending on how much space you want you're just going to put as soon as you uh, you know um line it up there it sort of slots in which is really nice so there we go and for this one i am going to emboss i don't know what shall i emboss let's emboss the two bigger ones i'll do a double outline for this one and i'm 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 not doing um freehand embossing on any of the work you know i'm just doing outline work for this this particular demo so all my outline work i'm i'm just going to continue using the 1mm or groovy number one if you decide that's what you're using so i've done that next i want to put i want to put um what do you call it uh band a band yeah a band going across there so i'm going to still use this plate i mean you can always uh, swap for your other plates if you wish but i'm just going to stick to this one and i'm going to which one goes right across this one goes right across maybe there about is that high enough is that too high i don't know this is where decision making, where I slow down with decision making. So again, you know, I'm using the over here to just help me guide as a sort of keep my project straight-ish. And no, do you know what? Can you see it's curving over there? It's not a problem. I don't know can you see it's curving there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shift it along a little bit because i don't really want a curve i want it to be completely straight so i'm going to shift it and line it up with that edge there you may like the curve so you can put a curve let let them oh, sorry, not put a curve you can keep a curve does that make sense i hope so okay so i'm going to emboss this the the third one along here one two three so the one that's closest to the dots because i really like the dots and i'm going to use those dots no yes no no definite no let me remove it remove yours if 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 you're doing this with me i want to line it up here with this one so that you know if i had done it there i would have had it that gap left so i would have had to remove the parchment re uh, real um realign it and then you know fill in that gap but if i position it here that makes more sense right I mean, this is one way to confuse all of you, isn't it? What a great way to stay awake. <laughs> all right, let's try again. So, am I off page, off screen, not off page, off screen. So I'm going to emboss this line and I am going to do the dots. Yes then hold on that doesn't work does it my computer's in the way so i can't so i am going to which way will i be able to shift it i prefer coming okay and then i'm going to leave this space this space i'm going to emboss in there i'm going to come to the other side of the tag 
and continue all the way to the end of the tag yes and the dots there's someone cutting the grass can you hear it see that's another thing i don't know how much sound gets picked up when i'm doing this sort of things um i don't know but can you imagine if um i don't know the tv became too loud for example and suddenly if it picks up every little sound for you guys <laughs> You could all start dancing to the Bollywood music that goes on. I could, let me explain what I'm doing first before I waffle. Um, I could approximately do a band, you know, exact, because I need another line. You see, I need another line to go at the top. So I could do that approximately, but I am not going to do that because I am going to put my a uh, rose border down first and decide you know where you want to put it so about there and to line it up approximately straightish i am going to use the, the 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 space between the edge of the plate to this line to see it you know the space is approximately the same from uh, from that end to that end just to make sure I am kind of straightish. And I'm going to stick that. Oops. Well, I was kind of straightish till I went oopsie daisy. So I'm going to stick that down, stick that down. And we're ready to go. So once again, I am going to, which window shall I use? Shall I use this one? Does that cover? Yeah, that's a good one. No, let me show you without the window first. So you're going to go from this edge and you're going to stop at this edge. Yeah, you're going to stop along there. If you see, you're not going to cross into this. Leave the tag empty at the moment. So because we want it to look like this border is going behind um, the tag. So here we go. Is there a song with here we go? No, 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 no. I know why, why it's sort of going ding a ling a ling in my head there's a song that is let it go when i first heard that song oh my gosh i i i re well yeah i wanted to try and sing it except you know what i do is not something anyone would classify as singing it's more like screeching and the uh, yeah the poor kids again the poor kids the screeching that was happening is quite hilarious for me actually for i am one of those um screechers singers screechy singers not only does she screech, but she also is absolutely, completely out of tune, tone deaf. And in my head, I am, I am, you know, singing so, so, so beautifully. I mean, I am the best singer of the world. I'm not sure how no one can hear this, see this, but in my head, I so am. But obviously it's not true and you can tell that by how fast a room clears out and I think it, when we were younger we, we did a lot of traveling um, with my dad 
You know, he really believed in family vacations and at least once a year, the whole family to get together and, you know, go somewhere, travel together and just be a family unit. So we used to do a load, a whole load of road trips, so many road trips. And yeah, I don't understand why they dreaded putting music on in the car. I just don't understand it. I mean, you know, there I was entertaining them for hours on end with my beautiful singing. And, you know, they, they would try their hardest to forget all the music at home. I, I just, I still don't understand why. It's just, you know. So anyway, it was on my bucket list for a very long time that maybe I should learn how to sing. But then eventually I thought, well, you know, I can't learn something I'm so good at, can I? So I gave up on the idea, basically. And... I still screech, sing, whatever anyone wants to call it. I have gone quieter, haven't I? My, my, uh, my, I'm suddenly thinking my voice has gone lower. It says, you know, this is so relaxing. I'm sort of almost, well, I am zoning out. I'm just in, well, I'm always in my own head. I think we're all in our own heads. But yeah, I, it's just so relaxing because, to be honest, the line art is already there for us. We're just embossing it out and just enjoying the process. And this is what it's about, you know, take that time out, enjoy the process. Chill. Oh, a teeny, teeny, teeny bit there. Not that it would have mattered. But since I saw it, I might as well put it in. And you can see over there. Um, and if I put it, so no, nothing where the tag is, but on the other side. Yeah. So let's remove that. And I'm going to come back and to the straight edge. I'm going to turn it around and I want to put... Um, the dots and a line on the other side, on the, well, at this point it's the bottom, isn't it? But if it was this way around, it would have been on the top. So I'm not sure which word should I use, top or bottom. But if I'm this way, it's bottom, right? Left. And for this one, I'm pretty much, you know, trying to see how I can which line I can use as a guide to sort of get it straightish. So I'm using around here just to see the space between the um, the two lines there to try and get it as straight. But at this point, I want to I want to see you know the space that I have between the flower and the dot there. I want it approximately the same at some point. Obviously, it's not going to be the same all the way around because. You know, it's not a definite bend. Some flowers are higher, some are lower. But approximately even on both sides. And stick it down. Stick it down. And so when I do this, I'm going to emboss. Am I happy with it? Let me just double check before. Because I'm talking at the same time. I don't want to mess it up. Although you can't really mess it up. So again, the lines, I don't need to go on that. So I'm going to leave, um, I'm not going to emboss inside the circle, the dots. This the um the gardener the gardener's finished not not our gardener um not our grass but whoever was cutting the grass has finished but the parakeets 
the neighbor has got um about seven or eight parakeets that come in to their garden i think they must have a what's it called a food thing magic that hangs thing magic you know what i mean a food feeder thing magic one of those things and they have seven or eight parakeets that come in every afternoon which is really nice to well, hear them chirping away and um, so here we go this is what we've got so far and i will show you a couple of differences now if you have a look this one the tag is this way around and uh, on this one the tag is this way around yes so you have got options on which way you want to do the tag if you're not sure you know how your tag will position out then you can always for example um take your parchment hold on let's do this i'm not going to do the whole thing but just just to show you what i mean i mean this one and I should have probably explained it in the beginning, but I was I was very busy waffling, so I forgot, as I'm sure <laughs> you noticed. Let me just do a rough, we will come back to the other one, but let me just show you, if you're not sure which way you want your inside design to go, so I'm going to do the... The same, the same um, outline, and I am going to go to the end because I'm not going to worry about filling that because I know my ribbon will cover it. I'm going to do this one, and I might as well do that. Huh, I might as well do this. This is going to be to be used in the future, right? Okay. So, you know, like I mentioned just now, on this one, the, the, the little tag is on this side. On this one, my tag is going to go this way. Yes? So, the tag is on this side. So, it neither is right, neither is wrong. It just depends what sort of look you want. And if, you, if you're not sure, what you can always do is take, take this... So what we did is I put, hold on, this way around. I put my tag this way and just to make sure it is where you want it, hold it in place, turn it around and look at the position from the front. So turn it around with both the plate and the parchment to see the position. If you wanted it the other way, like the one original card, take your parchment, turn it around, Yes, and position it there, turn it over this way and stick it down. That way you will have your tag this way around. Does that make sense? Yes. So the best way to see is, you know, before you emboss, always check it on the front. Well, not always, but check it on the front and see you're happy with, you know, where you want to position it. It's just a good way, a guide, a guide as to, you know, whether you like that or not. Yeah. Okay. Where was I? This one. Do I want a word? If, why not? Let's have a word. Well, special occasion is not going to fit along there, is it? But I can have occasion there. Hold on. Let me have a look and see. Yes, I definitely want special occasion. So bringing it here and where is my plate mate? Let's sit it in there. Oh. I was going to say all thumbs and uh, thumbs and fingers and nails and everything, but no, all all hand and sleeve in my case isn't it okay so i'm going to put special occasion but you can see it's not going to fit right so i'm going to do it as a well 
on top of one another kind of thing not on top of one another but um in sort of up and down kind of thing with my special fit there though let's bring it a little bit lower it should fit but in just in case you can always you know again the other thing you can do is if if this is the word you wanted and you want sure uh, emboss it out on a spare piece of uh, parchment and uh, uh, see see how you want to position it so if it's two words put it on top of one another and see if it will fit um before you do it on your main piece i have to be honest when i'm doing words i usually well i always do it on a rough piece first because i know me i usually get them um the wrong way around the letters so it's just safer by safer to do it on a scrap piece first and then uh, putting it over the main piece as a guide um of <laughs> which direction the letters go as well as where i want to position it so we've got occasion there and then we need special do i want it there now this is what i meant so i'm not sure where i want it do i want it no that's good and it can cut into it it will look really pretty but because i'm not sure oopsie daisy no you know let's move this because i can't do both of them together and so I'm going to judge both from the front and see do I want it there like this or do I want it there like this? I think I want it. We could be here all day at this rate, couldn't we? With me and in indecisiveness. No, I want it above there. So I'm going to turn it around, bring back my plate mate. Okie dokie and put it about there should be good is it straightish straightish stick it down there stick it up here and we emboss Oopsie daisy. I need to slow down, don't I? I need to slow down. The faster I go, the more I jump out of the outlines. And as much as I keep telling myself it's not a race, well, I know it's not a race, but it's like I always want to get to the next part, to the next part, to the next part. To the next project, to the next chocolate, the next cake, not a slice of cake, I meant the whole cake, yes, the whole cake, definitely. And so now we have the words. Do you know what I've forgotten to do? And it doesn't matter because I can do it now, it wasn't a big deal. Hold on, let me show you on the front. So that's where I've positioned my words. Yes, what I forgot to do is put something on inside the tag, the roses inside the tag. So for the roses, what I did is I just chose, you know, three roses, any the, uh, three bigger ones um, from here and put them in there. So which corner? So I need to decide, do I want it in this corner, my roses? Or do I want my roses this corner? I quite like, I think I would like them on this corner. So it's it's towards the, the straight edge of the tag. So it's going to be straight edge on the back here. I'm going to put that there. Let's start with that one and that one. Just give it a tumble dryer sheet rub there and... A rose here, 
a rose well i already said a rose here i'm still on the first one i was going to say and a rose here but i was still doing the first one and then maybe one do i want one going behind or don't i want one going behind or do i want one you know, and, and you can play with this. You don't need to necessarily position them the way I am positioning them. Um, or even if it, if you're not doing, a, for example, you're not using the tag itself. Uh, you, you're not using the tag plate. Whatever plate you have, play with the positioning, move things about. There is so many things on every groovy plate that there, there's just so many options. And it's really worth taking that time to look at the plates, have a play with them, pick up little elements uh, from within the plate. But can you see on this one, I didn't do the whole rows. I just did part of the rows. So I cut off my embossing point where the line of the tag is. So it's partial, which, which is really nice. You don't need to put a full element that's on the plate. You can just do it, um, well, just do a bit kind of thing um, 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 um what do i want to do which one do i want do i want a side different one let's go do i want a smaller one confusion time no then that goes more towards this one i wanted it more over here but that's not going to work is it well it could work couldn't it yeah let's have it there it could work. We will see. Not to worry. And this one is going to go partly behind this row. So I'm not going to emboss again the full the full rows there. I'm going to do from here. And I'm going to do that half. Leaving out this little teeny tiny bit there. If you can... Um, If you can see what I mean, it's just this little bit I'm leaving out because I want it to go behind um, the corner rows. So there we go. And of course, we need a few leaves because it is not going to quite look right without the leaves and uh, let's see let's have this is almost a full leaf so i'm going to go with that that's a nice big leaf as well so depending on what size of leaves you want and which direction you want your leaves to go in you're going to move your work around have a look can you see by moving your work around you can decide which direction you want your leaf to go in so i'm going to have this one here and i'm not sticking it down because it's only a small area there we go one leaf there should i stick to the same leaf i quite like that size but no let's let's pick a different one this time one here um i want one coming off here maybe I don't like that position. No, I don't like that position. Do I like that position or don't I like that position? Which position do I want my leaf to go in? Let's have it. Am I overthinking this? Probably. That's pretty. Do I want a teeny tiny one? Yeah, I do want a teeny tiny one. Why not? So from the smaller rose uh, uh, design, there you go. That's a nice, cute one. But then I don't want four leaves now. I want five leaves. So should I put one there? Or should I put one, one here? Yeah, I'm going to put one here. So another teeny tiny one here. Yep, that is good. That is good. Okay, I can keep going forever kind of thing, but I am going to stop. Um, on the original, I also put these dots in because I think they're really pretty. So at this point, I need to slot my tag back into the original sort of um, on the original lines. And it will slot in and stick it down. 
I just think the dots are really pretty. So I'm going to put them in. If you're not using um, this plate, you can always, um, what's it called? You can, you can, you can. Yes, you can. You can. Let me think it through. You can. I will get back to you when I think it through. Now, yes, I know what I was going to say. If you're not using this plate and to fill in this space, if you're wondering what you can do, you can do maybe grid work in there if you wanted. You know, even with your most basic grids, your straight grid or your diagonal grid, fill in every 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 hole using your basic grid and emboss those dots if you wish you can do you know next step grid work with a peak or cutting and things you could maybe use um one of your butterfly plates and do a separate 3d um a separate butterfly a no a butterfly on a separate piece of parchment cut it out and uh, stick it over the top or use a bread to connect it here um, there is so many options to fill this space up, yes? But I am going to basically stick with um, this plate for today. Now, the other thing is, if you're using this plate, can you see it curves there? So I don't want it to curve there. So I'm just going to go, I'm just going to emboss the areas that are going in a straight to begin with. There's one there, there's one there. But I'm going to stop where there's a curve along here. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna mark that on this side as well so I don't get carried away, I know where to stop. But this one is fine because this one stops at us, it's, it's straight, so there is no curve. Yeah, anywhere else, this one here. Can you get that? Or am I gonna mess it up? I think I can get that. Okay, so can you see there's all this space left and there is a little bit, I don't know if I'll be able to get another dot there. Let's work on the one at the top first. So I'm gonna remove the tabs. I'm going to slide it down a little bit until I can get, can you see, until it goes to the straight, realign those dots, yes. There we go. They will slot in again. Stick it down. I'm just gonna stick just the one side because I'm holding it down with uh, my other hand and continue filling those dots right to the top. Yes, so that's gone right to the top. But I also know that I think I can get another dot yeah, I think I can get one there. Hold on, let's bring it a bit lower so that I can have a look. So reposition, reposition, just about. I think it might go slightly on the thing. So this one here is this one. Oopsie daisy, I should have stuck it down, but that's okay. Who's going to know down? There's just a couple of spaces. There you go. So if I turn that round now, we have those dots. Yeah. And we were able to fill in those spaces and a couple of spaces down there. So bringing back this one here. Can you see that? Yeah, the dots here. Okay, I think we have got all the all the the, 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 the diddly do's, not the diddly do's, all the basic line art work in place. We are ready to color that. And uh, to color that, I'm gonna first start with the felt pens, which are the Perga Color exclusive pens. And because um, I have chosen this, this designer card, which is from the Indian Summer Pack, I'm gonna use these colors from the Perga Colors exclusives, which is the pink, the green, pink is five, green is 16, and am I using a brown? I'm not quite sure yet. I might, might, might. yeah, I think I will use the brown for the, for the area in the double outline, yes? So I'm ready to color that. 
I'm, I've sort of got into the habit now of choosing my backing card first. Sorry, let me just move this out of the way because it's uh, the tabs are sticking to everything at the moment. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? I have got used to, I remember that bit, I have got used to, <laughs> yes, choosing my backing card first because um, it makes it so much easier to choose uh, the colors I'm going to color with um, afterwards as opposed to choosing my colors first, coloring in the whole project and then later find I don't have a backing card that matches the colors I've used. So only for that reason, you may well prefer to color first and choose your backing card. It's just the way uh, I do, I work. I, I prefer to choose my backing card. Sorry, my chair has decided it's pushing me backwards. So I'm going to wheel myself forward. I love these wheelie chairs. They're just a great source of entertainment. Seriously. I'm going to move to the light, to the light um, uh, wave because like I'd said earlier, I prefer to color with my light wave on. So I'm going to move that there and I am going to turn my thing on the back. All the coloring I'm doing is on the back. I'm not coloring on the front and you probably see I'm going to be pretty messy with my coloring. But you know what? It's on the back and it is not going to matter because on the front, your coloring is still going to look, uh, sorry, your embossed lines are still going to look um, white. I mean, uh, that, that doesn't mean I'm not um, careful. Well, I am <laughs> both not careful and careful, if you see what I mean. Probably not uh, because it is con contradicting what I'm saying. But I don't overly stress it. If I go over, you know, some of the embossed line art, I don't worry about it because I know that on the front, it will be fine. And you can see, you know, with the felt pens, it's, it's, it's really quick coloring in. I have to admit my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do is literally just sit there with my groovy plates, you know, emboss out just the line art and sit there with my felt pens and just color. I just love doing that. I find it very relaxing, very therapeutic. And, you know, with parchment craft, it's very much a case of how much do you want to do your, how much... How many techniques do you want to put on your, on your, uh, uh, on your um, artwork on the day? On some days, you may feel like doing something, but not too much. Just sit and relax. So on, the, on those days, especially for me, I find, you know, just sitting and coloring very relaxing. Just do the line art and just color. Because I don't want to think too much, you know, about embossing or perforating or, sorry, embossing, perforating, grid work. If I'm having a hard day, I want to do something a bit more, sort of, something that I don't need to think too much about. Oh, I love those parakeets. But you can see, I mean, I'm just literally coloring it in. I'm not worried I'm going over the white outlines because I don't know if you'll be able... I mean, that looks pretty bad on the front as well, right? But stress you not because you're looking at it through the light box. If I show you on the black mat, there you see, that's the front. <laughs> That looked pretty bad, didn't it? But on the on the front, even if I bring it close closer, can you see on the front? It is all still very good. Yeah? And on the back, if I show you on the back, it looks pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Pretty well, not bad, but it's not as neat and tidy as it looks like on the front. It's almost like magic when you turn it around and you think, oh, that's pretty good. 
it's a, a feel proud of myself moment. Well, for me it is anyway. That, wow, I did that. So, yes, coloring on the back and... Uh, I mean, oh, you can take a bit more time doing this if you like. You don't need to be like rough like I am being, you know. Um, but this is supposed to be fun day for me. So today's uh, not day, fun, fun couple of hours. So I'm, I'm not going to stress over it and get worked up about staying within just the space of the line art especially knowing fully well it's good on the front but there will always be techniques you know with coloring where you will need to be a bit more careful so don't don't as much as i'm saying you know i'm doing it roughly and things and yes i am for this project but there are lots of other projects where even though i am just coloring in i am a bit more careful so although i i am saying it very lightly at the moment i'm not very careful there there are so many projects where you would need to be careful I think it will very much depend on project to project. Um, with these colors as well, you know, um, they're translucent colors. So that means that basically if, if you want, uh, if you love this color, but you want it uh, darker in certain areas, just by going over those areas again, you will be able to get them darker. You can get a lot of, uh, not well, I guess you could get a lot of tones, but um, you can, yeah, just layer up on the, on the, your coloring to get, to get the color darker. That really did not make sense, did it? It didn't to me. I'm trying to work out in my head how to say it. By going over any area the second time with the same color, it will get darker. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, that was funny. Uh, here we go. Am I off, off screen? I need um, X marks the cross, X marks, no, cross, X marks, never mind. I just need an X in the middle somewhere to tell me to stay. <laughs> and then, you know, like I said, I'm going to in the, uh, the double space outline within the double between the double outlines of the tag i'm going to use the brown and, and normally i do have my groovy guard as well i almost went off the tag there so you know to an extent you you do need to be a bit careful um Yes, I normally do have my groovy guard, but I have put it under zillions of things at the moment. So I'm not going to attempt looking for it. So I'm just holding uh, the parchment down as I'm uh, doing this. Have I colored it all? Have I colored it all? Blah, 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 blah. You know, if I was pretending to be, well, I'm not pre I, I am trying to be really like mature and professional and everything. But then the minute I say something like, blah, 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 I think, 
Well, that didn't last long, did it? Trying to be professional with the demo. How is that? Messy, yes, but it is the back. And to show you the front, da, da, da. Pretty good, no? Yeah, this way. Yeah. Okay. This time I want to, if I show you on the actual, on the actual, on the actual tag itself. Here we go. Can you see I've colored the band as well and the tag there? So that's what we're going to do because I quite like that. Do I want to or do I not want to actually? I do, I don't. I do. Oh, sorry. I put my hands on my head and I was helping my head along. Um to say either yes or no, instead I just hit the phone. I am going to use the pencils. I'm not saying no to the pencils, but I'm wondering, shall I color the tag in there, um, color the strip in there and there like the original tag, or shall we put some coloring on this area for a, for a change to see what it looks like because I've already shown you this one. So I'm wondering, let's color it slightly differently to just show you um, what it would look if we color, colored outside the band and outside the smaller tag, yes? As a reference point, as you know, if you decide you wanna try um, this sort of layout on another card, you've got options to both. So what colors do I have? I'm using the Pergoliner B pencils this time. And I have got, for this one, with the colors I'm using, I've got B9 and B14. I think the B9 and the B14, 14, uh, 14 is the pinky purple, and the 9 is the yellow. I think where the yellow and the purple mix, it's going to make an orange, or I don't know, we'll have to see, or it might make a brown. It shouldn't make a brown. I think it's more likely to make an orange, but it just depends, you know, what sort of a, whether it's towards the um, brownie yellow or, I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. Not a big deal, right? So I, I'm going to color And I may not color everything pink. I'm going to do it sort of pink. Yeah, I'm going to do this pink, about half of it pink and half of it yellow and show you how to blend. So I'm using it quite low. I don't want any sharp uh, pencil outline. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to do this half, color it in. And it is going to look rough and messy and all that, yes. But when we blend it with the dorso oil, it will smooth out. So again, you know, don't, don't get all worked up over how messy it looks at this point. And this is still on the back. All the coloring, like I said, I'm doing on the back on this project. Yeah, I think that's enough. Let's have some happy yellow. And then yellow. I'm going a little bit into the pink as well. Um, because I, th well, I want to see what color transition I'll get. And it just, it will blend a lot nicer, you know, um, if you've gone a little bit into that color as well. The yellow is quite a light color. So, um, you know, after I've blended it, I may need to put some more if I want it stronger. I don't know. I'll see, I'll decide later. 
and there we go let's have a bit more for some good measure okay blending time i really need to um sorry i i have made such a mess so we need some oopsie daisy sorry again yes uh, we need some blending, blending, blending nibs. We need our blending pen. We need um, some dorso or uh, some dorso oil, and I'm going to put a drop onto a sponge. So I've got a sponge here. Hold on, no, that's not going to work, is it? I'm going to put this there to show you, so the light is not glaring. Um, so this is what we are going to blend. You can see it's, it, it looks a bit messy, but that's okay. And it looks really light, but as soon as we blend that, it will become a bit more vibrant. So don't worry about that quite yet. So a drop of dorsal, oh, that was a bit more than a drop, wasn't it? But you only need a drop. Silly me. Um, onto a sponge I have put it. I'm going to get my blending pen, one of my nibs. So this is a, uh, the nib I use for my yellow. And I'm going to turn it around. And actually, do you know what? I'm, for, I th it's really hard with yellow for you to see if I've got the light, a light wave on. So I'm going to use it without the light wave. And I'm going to use it straight on this mat. Just so everyone can see it properly. I'm starting with yellow because that's my lighter color. So it just makes it easier to start with that and then, you know, change my nib as I go uh, deeper into the pinky color. Um, if you don't have uh, the blending nibs, you can use a, a bit of kitchen towel. A bit of kitchen towel. I mean, I don't have kitchen towel at the moment with me, so please ignore <laughs> my dirty kitchen towel. But take some kitchen towel, fold it up. Yes, triangle, that's too thick, hold on, let me open it up. So you, I've got it in, pretend it's a nice clean one. Yes, we're pretending it's a lovely clean one. We're going to fold it, fold it. Might need to bring it into a bit more pointy like this. So, you know, it's sort of sturdy. And you can blend it that way. So just to show you what I mean, I've got that there. Oopsie daisy. I'm going to just touch it on there. And with the kitchen towel, I can blend that. That is a lot of oil. Can you see? It's just floating. The oil is floating. Because I have put a lot of oil on there by mistake, which I don't need. So, you know, if, if that happens, you want to... Um, I'm going to turn my towel to a sort of a dry area, bring it to a better point than I have here, but I want to mop up the oil basically. I want to mop up that oil before I go again. And it is literally, you know, I got too much in there. You literally do need just a tiny drop. So I don't know what got into my head. I wasn't concentrating enough. So I put, okay, go again. I don't need to, can you see that's where my oil was? I don't need to touch it on the dorsal oil because I still have oil on my um, kitchen towel and I can blend that. So little round circular motion to blend the oil, uh, to blend the pencil. The other thing you can use is, um, 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 let me grab it, a cotton bud, if you wish. And again, you know, I, I'm going to try not to get too much, just the teeny tiniest amount, because I, I know I, I have put out a lot, and you can use that. But again, I am just rubbing it off. I still have too much. I'm going to turn it around and mop up my oil because that is just way too much. 
but as I'm mopping it up, I am just blending what what's around it and you can see it, the pencil work going smoother so cotton bud is another option i am going to go with what i like which is the uh, blending nibs and the blending pen and because i know definitely this is too much oil on on the thing and i am going to get too much oil on here i'm going to just touch it very quickly yes yeah? so just literally tap and up but I'm going to take some off before I start. And then, oopsie daisy, come here and blend. Little round circular movement. And to be honest, you know, your kitchen towel and your, um, your kitchen towel your cotton bud they when you touch it on the oil they soak in the oil a lot more than it does on the blending nib so although i took some of the oil off on the on the kitchen towel because i was scared it's going to be too much it wasn't so i'm going to touch it and i know it's not too much for what i'm doing so i don't need to mop up any of the oil and i can just blend it it is one of those things if you haven't done blending before you're going to have to play with um play with it and uh, see how much oil you need to put on not put how much how much you need to touch into you know the into into this 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 thingamajig and blend and I, I showed you when it's too much, it, it literally just sits as a, as a puddle, really, doesn't it? If it's not enough, it will feel, it won't be smooth blending and you will see it as, you, as you're blending. So if you get too much, you need to just take off excess on a piece of kitchen towel, like I showed you. If you get too little, just touch it on the oil once more and go. Did that make sense? I'm doing the yellow, but just to show you on the front, can you see that that's what uh, just colored. And when we blend it, it's become a bit more vibrant here. And that was without the blending so far. So I'm going to do this other side as well. I need a bit more the nibs are not they don't absorb absorb the oil the oil is um, um, well I don't know where the oil is it's at the top isn't it but but the oil on the kitchen towel and the cocktail stick it's sort of oh, how should I say it 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 goes into it just stays soggy basically yes it stays soggy um i'm going to change my nib for the other color nib which i have lost or dropped or something or i don't know hold on let me find it there you go so i've taken the other one in i'm replacing it with this color and I am going to go there, touch, so I've just touched a little bit there. And I am going to blend these two. Well, I don't normally blend first, but I, I'm working this way. So I've, I'm just going to go here and work across the other opposite side. So I'm, I'm going a little bit into the yellow and bringing the color, not the color, uh, blending across but I'm still going little round circular uh, movement and I'm going to work across I mean normally what you would do is you would work each individual color separately and then where they where they meet you would blend those um 
when you get to them, but you would do the yellow first, you would do the pink first, and then do the blend. Of course, that is not what I did because, well, I didn't feel like it, I guess. But traditionally, you would do each color separately and then where they meet, that's where you blend just by, you know, rubbing these two colors together. I think, you know, one of the things you, uh, everyone should try uh, and, uh, you know, really think about, you do this for fun, you do it for enjoyment. And yes, most definitely to improve, um, you know, to improve on what you have learned or, you know, learn something new and things. But at the end of the day, it is a lot more for enjoyment. And if you're scared constantly of doing this wrong or doing that wrong or this is not how it's done, it takes a lot of the fun away from creating or, you know, or doing what you're doing. And I just don't see the point of it. So I don't overthink what I do. Yes, there is definitely traditional ways of doing things. And, you know, they probably become tradition for a good reason. Definitely, you know, they probably do. I have, I've, I've just never been very good at following tradition, leave alone, not, not only in parchment, but generally in life. I'm definitely one of those rebels in my family who just really don't understand the whole tradition thing, Majig. It just doesn't happen. For, for me, I do parchment, I do groovy because it, it's to escape. It's, it's there to escape, you know, real life stresses that we all have. It's to sit down, make time for myself and enjoy this time. So if I'm constantly worrying or stressing about doing something wrong, then why am I exactly doing it? Yes? No, I don't know if you agree with me, but I'm still going to do it the way I want to do it. Um, and yes, I do know that I will have a lot of people come back and say, this is not how you should have done it. This is not how you should have demonstrated it. Um, but I have explained to you how it is traditionally done. And I explained to you that this is how I felt like doing it. So this is how I am doing it. And to show you on the front, that's what it looks like. Has it made a difference to the results? No, it hasn't. The results are still the same as if I had done them um, exactly traditionally as well. The traditional way of doing things or, you know, do this color first, do that color first, then where they meet uh, merge them, uh, you know, mix them together. It, it's too much to think about for my little brain. My brain is far too little for all that. So I, I've done it this way, yes? But for you guys, and if you haven't done this before, then practice both sides. Seriously, have a practice, see what works for you. You know, one thing, if it works for one person, doesn't necessarily work for the next person. It really doesn't. So have a play. You decide what you want to do. This is your time. So, yes, lecture over. Yes, I feel like I'm, I'm lecturing people. Well, my, my kids would definitely say, Mom, why are you lecturing everyone? They, mind you, if they were listening in, they would probably be cracking up at this point, thinking, what are you going on about, Mother? Um, what are we doing next? What am I doing next? Let me show you the two tags while I figure out what we're doing next. So that is one of them. And you can see in this one, can you see it? Do I need to bring it a bit lower? Let me put it side by side this way maybe. I don't know. I can't see. So I have no idea. But no, I prefer it this way because you can see the positioning of the tags. So in this one, you know, the label is on this side, this one, but the coloring, as I was saying, you know, in this one, I colored the, the band and the tag here. On this one, I've colored the outside instead and left the tag 
and the band without the color. It just gives you a reference point of what you might like, what you may want to try, yeah? So I've done it two different ways, but the original one I had done in there rather than outside. Well, reference point, I guess. Okay, pico cutting. So for pico cutting, I need the two needle tool. I'm using the bold two needle tool. You need your uh, perforating mat. So the, oh, hold on, let me just grab mine. So you want your, your super foam. I'm gonna move this mat out of the way somewhere. I don't know where. Let me put it up there. Please don't fall in case I need you. Oh my gosh, I'm talking to the mat. I'm telling the mat not to fall, like it's gonna to listen to me. I mean, if it wants to fall, it will fall, won't it? It's not like going to say, okay, dear, I will not fall down because you requested me. Oh my gosh, I'm waffling. I'm talking to myself. Ah, focus, focus, focus. Where's my piece of parchment? There you go. Okay, focusing. We need our super foam. That's the one centimeter one. Um, and we need the pico foam, the black one. The foam that comes in your, uh, what's it called, in your, with your light wave, that is too thin, yes? So you do need the pico foam because, not the pico foam, the, uh, the super foam because it's uh, thicker. Yes, we want nice, lovely, big holes that we can put our, the tips of the scissors in. But you can see when I put it like this, I cannot see very clearly um, where, my, uh, where my outlines are. You may prefer to use uh, your light wave, in which case you will be able to see the outline. Yes, yes, you see the outlines a lot better. I don't, for my, for when I'm perforating, I prefer using my Pico foam over there. And this is the way I see my white outlines the best, to be honest. So this is what I am going to do. The other thing is that, you know, and I don't know how much this applies to how many people. Sometimes, I mean, not sometimes. For me, usually, I use my, um, the original embossing mat with the very first um, um, starter kit. This is the mat that came with it, the embossing mat. It is now available to buy separately. When I'm embossing, this is what I prefer to use when I'm doing things for myself because I just find my holes don't break easily on it. There's enough space between the holes that as I'm perforating, they don't start breaking because I get distracted very easily. And sometimes when I'm rushing, I'm not paying too much attention to keeping the tool upright or, you know, yes, I should keep all those things in mind, but I don't, you know, chocolate is a huge distraction in life. Massive, massive distraction. So I don't. I will show you the difference with both. So, you know, you can judge uh, whether you, if, if you do have this blue mat, whether you want to practice and play on it, you know. So I will show you with that as well. But uh, let's start with the one. I am using the super foam and the pico foam. And I'm going to use the bold two needle tool. You can use the fine two needle tool. That is absolutely up to you. I am trying to look for my groovy guard. And I am going to perforate along the edge. So I want to perforate along the outside here. And I want to perforate in there. Oh, am I on screen or off screen? I want to perforate the hole in that uh, so I can put my ribbon through there. So I am going to put on my glasses because I definitely am not going to be able to see without these. Uh, here we go. So first two holes. Yeah, I've made the first two holes. After that, I am making only one hole at a time. I am hooking one of my needles into the last hole 
bringing my tool upright and perforating. Hooking it into the last hole upright, bring it upright and perforate. I The holes are quite big. I'm not going all the way to the right to the end of the tool with the with this bold uh, bold to needle tool because if i don't know if you'll be able to see but about three quarters of the way you can see the width of the uh the not the width the diameter of the needles is approximately the same as the diameter right to the base of the needle so i don't need to go right to the end and you know every time hit the parchment with this so i'm going about three quarters of the way so hooking it bringing it upright perforate I think that's the quietest I've been so far. Was it five seconds? Six seconds. Wow. Relief to your ears. So I'm going to move the groovy guard along and continue. I mean, you don't need to, you know, okay, I am going, you know, I'm saying go at an angle, hook it in, bring it upright. You may not need to. You may be able to perforate straight along. The main thing is keep your tool upright and perforate, you know, but always making sure your one of your needles is going into your last hole. I just, I think for me, it's become habit to hook it and uh, perforate. Although this is working for a change for me. But then that's, I guess, because I am going slower as well at this point. Otherwise, um, I generally miss. So I prefer to hook mine and uh, perforate. If you're not sure about getting your perforations straight in a line like I am, you can use your um, straight grid to perforate along the edge to get you um, the straight perforations uh, along there, use your straight grid. And then when you get to where it curves, you can go back to your two needle tool or you can use the grid as well, you know, move it ever so slightly every time to work along the curve. The other way is that, you know, you can use, for example, um, one of the straight edges I come this way. I don't know which way. This one. Let's use this one. One of the straight edges of the window of your groovy guard as a guide to keep you sort of straight. So I've just, I can see a little bit. I don't know if you can see a little bit, but I can see a little bit of where my uh, embossed outline is. And I'm going to use the guard and that outline as a guide to keeping it straight if I need to. So that's another option of keeping your holes straight. But I do prefer, uh, I prefer um, just going for it and hoping for the best really. So I am going to, um, I'm hoping everyone has um, seen what I'm doing um, so far. And I'm going to zoom past, zoom past. No, I'm going to sort of just, yeah, just go for it kind of thing. I am aware of the time and you know I said to I said to Maggie maximum an hour it's only a it's only a tag it won't take us long and it's it's been well I don't know how long it's been but it's definitely been more than an hour I think I almost forget how long it takes to do groovy 
and also because I, I'm sort of stopping and starting and explaining a lot of things so I guess it's taking longer than it did to finish the tag on my own kind of thing but that's okay it's it I feel it's important to explain things and you know if you need to go that is okay too because you can always watch this later to finish it <laughs> provided I don't click anything stupid and erase the whole thing So I'm going to turn it around and you can see I'm always turning my uh, parchment around. How close you perforate to the line or how far away from the line you perforate that I think that is very um, one it's it's I think uh, your personal taste whether you want uh, a little bit of space between your outline and your perforations and picos and the other thing is that if you're just starting off um, uh, pico cutting then what you definitely don't want to do is you don't want to perforate on the uh, white line embossed line art so it's it's better to leave a larger gap than uh, you know go on the white outline so leave that larger gap and as you get more confident with um, the whole process you can go closer and closer to the outline itself I am going to, I'm, I'm pressing, I'm, I'm sort of rushing it and I know I'm breaking those holes. So I re need to really slow down a little bit because I am breaking the holes by rushing it. But I want to show you, so that is using the two mats together. I'm going to show you with this, like I said, I would show you because this is how I prefer to perforate. And because it's less, the, the depth is less of this mat as uh, than, the, than the super foam. I find that, you know, the space between the holes is larger so less less chance of the of the perforations breaking but the problem with this is i'm not going to get another two needle i'll come back to what i was saying i'm not going to get another two needle tool in this gap if you have a look at the corner there here i'm not going to get another two needle there but that gap is far too large so i need to break that space so i'm going to bring in my one needle tool and make a hole in between by the time you uh, you know pico cut the whole thing trust me no one's going to notice that you had one or two areas where you had to use a one needle tool it will all be fine yeah um and just to show you the difference between so this area here was where i used to, uh, where i perforate perf perforated over this blue mat and you can see the spacing is a bit more uh and the uh, the holes are smaller than over here where the holes are bigger and the spacing a little bit less I think it is something you're going to have to play with. If you're just starting off pico cutting, these holes may be too small for you. So you may be better off making your hole slightly bigger. Have a play. See what works for you. Right. Let's... Oh, I forgot to do the middle bit. So the hole in there, in this circle... There we go. Okay, cutting. 
So I'm going to cut over the pico foam. Some of you may prefer to cut holding it up. It is, you know, again, something else. Sorry, but definitely you need to play with that. We have the perga cutters, the ring lock scissors, and the exclusives. So I'm going to use the, let me show you with the perga cutters first, because then I'm going to go to the exclusives, because at the moment that's what I'm preferring to use. So with the perga cutters, it's basically pinching them, curve downwards, a uh, curve down, sorry, and uh, the the curve of the the scissors. You could try curve upwards and see what works for you. With the perga cutters, though, I prefer the curve down. Just the very tips go into the holes. Just the very tips into the holes. I bring them slightly lower against the paper and as I'm uh, pinching them shut, hold on, I can't see, the camera's in the, the phone's in the way, hold on. Okay, as I'm pinching shut, I may need to twist ever so slightly, um, well, I twist towards my left, my first one. Thereafter, I t all, if I'm going to twist, I'm going to twist always towards the previous cut. So towards the previous cut, which is this way. If I go the opposite way, I risk breaking the holes. So if, 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 if you are going to twist, it's always towards your previous cut. Now, twisting may not work for you. You may want to just, just uh, pinch them shut. Oops, I did twist. Can you see? I don't necessarily need to twist. But I think I am preferring the little twist action. And, and when we say twist slightly, well, twist doesn't mean a huge massive twist like this because that will definitely break, uh, you know, uh, tear the parchment and all sorts of things. It's just the slightest, slightest, slightest just twist. Now, I don't use the perga cutters. I prefer the scissors, either the, um, the ring locks or um, today I'm going to use the exclusives, but it's exactly the same. Basically, the ring locks have a bigger space for your finger and thumb as opposed to the exclusives. I jump between the two depending on, you know, on the day, if my fingers are hurting or whatever, I just go with what is more comfortable for me. At the moment, I'm using my ring, uh, my sorry, exclusive scissors. Now, a lot of you uh, will have been taught to use your scissors with the curve down, um, third finger into one of the holes and first finger into the other hole and you're doing this, yes? I prefer to hold it with the curve up first finger into here and thumb into here and this this fourth third fourth finger is sort of just keeping um uh, just giving me stability giving my scissors that stability what you want to uh, look for basically and i forgot to mention this with your perga cutters is you know look for this v that's the v you want on your pico so as long as when you put your scissors down it's uh, it's got that V, you're going to get the V. The other thing I forgot to mention is, you know, you're holding your scissors over your waist. For me, this is my waist. The waist is the bit that is going to fall out. So I am holding my scissors over my waist. Yes, if, if I was wanted to cut this row, but had my parchment this way and cut this row this way, I am I'm cutting into the parchment. I'm not going to get my picos. My picos are going to fall out with this this piece here. They're all going to fall out and this is the edge that's going to look really tatty and messy. So always the scissors is over the bit that is going to fall out. Holding the scissors um, curve up for me. For you, it might be curved down. And as as I close them, one, I'm making sure I've got that V there just the tips one again once again 
and a slight twist towards the previous cut because I I do give it a little twist. I think again it's something that varies. Oh, it's raining. Can you hear that? Well, I'm hoping you can hear me at least. Um, sorry. Um, sometimes I twist, sometimes I don't. Sounds like a dance. So just the tips. So in there, close and slight twist. In there, and just the tips. Literally just the tips. I am not digging my scissors in. Some of these holes I broke because I was um, perforating a bit too fast. And you know, there's definitely, you know, in, in any of the techniques for parchment, rushing really doesn't pay. Honestly, trust me, it really. But especially for embossing, and uh, perforating and cutting, you really do need to slow down. Take your time. With embossing, take your time, you know, letting your parchment rest between the layers. Two definite techniques you really cannot rush. And grid work you cannot rush. But oh boy, we get tempted, don't we? Well, I don't know if I should say we, but I get tempted. Because there's the next best thing happening around the corner every single day. Every single moment in life. There's something better that's waiting for me. So I'm rushing. And usually, no, there is nothing better waiting. I mean, I'm not saying things are bad, but then there's nothing else that's waiting that uh, that's like wow kind of thing so there's no need for me to rush and keep turning your parchment so that you know it's you're always working over the waist and your wrist is comfortable Should I have maybe just stuck to the original idea of just doing little parchlets, two inch by two inch? Little, not two inch. Is it two inch? Five centimeter by five centimeters. I don't know what that is. Because this one has definitely taken a lot longer than I thought it would. And I'm just worried. Everyone is probably getting a bit fed up now or hungry or something like that. Not to mention... I'm supposed to be cooking. Maybe I should be providing some antacids with the meals. I don't know. I remember one Halloween um, my kids were a little bit embarrassed actually when I did that. Uh, the kids came knocking and there I was handing out, uh, I mean I give them sweets because you know every uh, child deserves a sweet on Halloween but I was giving out toothbrushes as well. The kids were so embarrassed, seriously they were so embarrassed. But after all those sweets surely they needed some toothbrush, some, right? I mean, I'm sure they have toothbrush at home. Where is it not cut? Yeah, there we go. So there we go. There's our tag. Oopsie, and all the pico cutting there. Some of them, like I said, as I was perforating, I knew they were breaking because I was rushing it. But do you know what? Life's too short. I'm not going to stress over it or have sleepless nights over it because... 
I have enjoyed the process. So I'm going to attach this on this, like this. And how am I going to attach it? I can use, what should I use? Should I use a brad? Where should I use a brad? I may use a brad one here, but it may need somewhere else. Okay, Pergamano brads. That's what I'm going to use for this. And let's take... I think I could get away with three. So I'm going to just position that. I need a little tool to make holes with. So, so that, you know, there's even spacing all the way around. And I'm gonna make a hole in the middle there. Push that through. Turn it round. And this is what I meant. Can you see on the back, you can see the uh, where, where we folded it. So you would need another cutout uh, piece to cover this. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll finish it off later um, because I hadn't pre-cut one to do it because I, I wasn't sure whether I was going to use brads or not. But now that I've decided to use brads, I know that I definitely need to, um, I definitely need to something. Do you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to put, I was going to use some sequins, wasn't it? And the lovely thing about the sequins is I can perforate, what color shall I use? Should I go completely random? Purple? No, I don't like purple. Green? Ooh, I like that green. I'm going to use that green. So I want to put one bread there. So I'm going to put the bread, oopsie daisy, through the sequence. Oopsie daisy. Am I off the page? Off the screen? I, why do I keep saying off the page? Um through there, pick up the sequence and through there. And can you see that looks really pretty? I like that. And fold that back. They are staticky, so they're sort of clinging to me everywhere. And do I want, I want, I think I'll put one here. So I want the same color there, make a hole. Um, maybe there, no, stay there, please. Except now I have put this one brad without the sequence and I want one there. So I am going to take this one off. So, you know, to take it's, it's so easy enough, take it off and don't lose it. <laughs> And get your, I'm going to put that there, bring my, and put it back in with, oh, isn't that pretty? I like that. We all need a bit of sparkle in life. There you go. Let's put the others back. Do I want, do I want another couple? I think I do want another couple. So the other ones don't need a brad, to be honest, because, um, you know, I just, I, I was using the brads so that I can hold the parchment to the, I can, um, not hold, yeah, I can um, attach the parchment to the backing. Why can't I find the same green now? How can I run out of the same green in such a huge tub? Seriously? Such a huge tub of sequins. It's not possible. I bet all of you are thinking I'm doing this intentionally just so I can play with the sequence, right? You may be right though. So I may put one, let's put one here. And let's put one, I should put it. Da, 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 da. Because I, I definitely don't want four. I like things in um, odd numbers. So that's why I'm wondering, where should I put it? 
the, I don't know. Yeah, that is good. No, that is not. No, let's put it over there. That's good. Let's not overthink it. Yeah, I like that. And there's our tag. Let's get a bit of ribbon to finish it. Now, isn't this happy? Look at that. That's so happy. I mean, can you say sequence is happy? Like, it's, sorry, I'm just trying to, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to f just roll this up so I can, um, I can thread it through as it's quite thick, the ribbon is quite thick, but I don't think I'm going to be able to as it's a little bit fiddly for me. No, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Always try, always try. And so I fold I had put I've folded the ribbon in half. Put the loop through and bring these two ends through that loop and just pull it through a little bit carefully because you know although if I if I pull it too hard I know I'm going to um, rip it so I'm just trying to do it a bit more gently and there you go and there's my tag let's trim it up a teeny tiny bit as that bit you can see has frayed a little bit so I'm just going to neaten it up and trim it there and we have another tag so this was tag number one and there was the doesn't that look pretty with that as a backdrop Oh, upside down. There you go. This way around. Oh, can you see that? Can you not see that? I don't know. But there you go. So that's what we have. Two tags. And uh, yeah, just worked slightly differently in positioning and in colors, but generally the same idea. And like I said right at the beginning, go with the layout of... Uh, the tag itself you don't need to do the tag you can use your nested squares nested rectangles nested ovals anything you can use any border plate it doesn't matter it's more the layout so instead of the tag here if you don't have a tag plate you could have used a circle you could have used a hexagon you could have used a square in its place anything so really the main thing is the layout Yes, for any of the cards that I might do in Facebook Lives and things, it will be much more about the layouts. Um, and like I said, these two, I will blog um, the step-by-steps off for you guys. Um, yeah, so just as an option of some more tags. But as you see, I already have four tags done. My collection of tags is going to be awesome in a few months uh, time and i can't wait to see them all together in a whole bunch in a well something a bit better than just a scrappy old box but you know just all of them together they will be really lovely if you enjoyed this well great <laughs> that's nice to know i hope i made sense in everything i do do workshops a little plug for myself so if anyone is interested in my monthly workshops which are live over zoom please contact me either via messenger or my email address is tina cox creative coaching at gmail.com our march workshop if you're interested in seeing what i'm going to do it's going to be this card here where our focus, well, my focus is to teach you how to emboss, especially emboss uh, leaving these gaps. But also the focus is on pico cutting. So let me move this out of the way and you can see on the edge there, we've done pico cutting. So focus is going to be on embossing 
and pico cutting and these are just some of the samples so this is actually this is um, this is the same card design except in this one i've colored it in this one it's got a bit more embossing but once i teach you how to emboss these flowers and butterflies you would be able to do this um, this is just a different color variation, a different color variation. This one is just extra inspiration using the exactly same plates. But um, once you've done the workshop, you will know how to do pico cutting and the embossing. For my March workshop, I'm giving away extra set of instructions, PDF instructions for this card as well. So a little plug, but focus on embossing and pico cutting so if you're interested let me know it's on 20th march 2 to 5 uk time um have i forgotten anything yeah message me email me because i have come to you know that awkward point i i, I had come to at the first facebook live i didn't know how to say goodbye in a really nice natural um professional way so i've reached this awkward point and I'm not even sure how to finish this live again because it was too long ago since I did the last one. I forgot to mention next one is on the 27th of, of February. No, it's not. 27th of March, which is two weeks today. Same time, 2 p.m. UK time. I have no idea what I'm going to use, but my base is going to be the tag. What do I have on my desk at the moment? And I'll go with that which plate okay let's go with this plate so then i'm going to use my base as this one but i'm going to use my oopsie daisy plate for for that live in two weeks time so if you have this plate um you'll be able to do what we do but i'm going to keep it still as i'm going to make it as a tag only because it's easier small enough to teach on and still get enough techniques in um yeah so hopefully i will see you then um yeah do i just say goodbye i guess i don't know but thank you for joining me it was longer than i thought it would be and i'm sorry about that i will try and make them shorter if i can all of you take care and uh, yes Enjoy, have a good um, rest of the afternoon, evening, and the rest of the evening. Bye.